Even though I hunted this deer at least three times a week, I would never see this joker in the daylight. I would always hunt and then get a trail camera picture of him later that night. Didn't matter where I went, somewhere on the farm, I would get a picture of this deer, but it was always late at night or super early in the morning before daylight. I woke up the morning of December 1st, two days before my birthday, and it just felt like a good day to go deer hunting. There was a front pushing through. I'm driving down my parents' driveway, which is right down the road from my little farm. And I'm halfway down the driveway thinking I'm going to go like three miles back in their woods, like way back in there and hunt a totally different spot just to try something new. Maybe he's on his feet and he's way back in there. And I just get this feeling like, go back to the field that you originally saw this deer in back in 2015. I just had a feeling that I needed to be in that stand. I needed to be back where I first spotted that deer. So I turned the truck around right there in the driveway and headed back to that stand. Now all I had with me, I had a little POV camera. It wasn't, it's not very high quality footage or anything like that. And my rifle, that's all I had. And I got out there at about four o'clock in the afternoon. I was running a little bit late and I got out there about four o'clock. At about 4.30, it's starting to spit rain. It's misting out. And I look over in the far tree line, right where I got the first trail camera picture of this deer and all I see is a giant rat coming at me. I turn the camera on on the end of the gun and get my crosshairs fixed on his chest. He's walking right to me. Now this deer is 70 yards in closing and when he gets into about 50 yards, the thing that I'm dealing with is I've got this cedar tree that I'm in and if he gets below a certain point, I won't be able to get the angle to shoot him. Uh. So I frantically start trying to stop this deer and I'm looking for that front on chest shot. I'm up in the tree bleating like a calf stuck in a woven wire fence and the deer finally hears me and stops. I shoot and make a perfect shot. It crushes him right there. This deer immediately goes down. He starts to roll and he's kind of starting to pick up momentum and make his way across the field just rolling and trying to get up. But anytime a deer acts like he might get up and start running, you need to put a follow-up shot in him if you can. So I got no cameraman and no concern and no care about filming any of this. I got my cell phone in my pocket so I film a little makeshift recovery once I see this deer. Well, it's December 1st, and I've just shot the biggest buck that I've ever killed in Virginia. This is a deer that I've got trail camera pictures of for the last four years. Um, I found one of his sheds when he was a two-year-old, and he, he threw that point on a different side, but this is definitely that deer. If you look right there, you can tell that's 100% the same deer. It only seemed right to pack this deer full of ice and hang him up for the night and then get some good footage of him the next day. We came out here to take pictures of him today. Had him on ice last night. He's still packed full of ice right now, so we're gonna go cut him up here in a minute in the barn, but the field right behind me that you can kind of see through the timber is the field I killed him in. And it's actually the field that I first got a picture of him and a first glimpse of him when he was two years old. Just an amazing, I mean, just a beast. Giant buck for around here. <laughs> 